It seems like everybody is using crumbs to make either quilts or projects or something. It is absolutely the craze right now. But before we get started, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me. So crumb quilts or crumb fabric or crumb pieces are essentially teeny tiny pieces of fabric that you maybe couldn't use in another project and you would save them and sew them together to actually make fabric, like something like this. And you just keep sewing and sewing until you get a piece big enough for whatever project that you're going to be working on. It's a lot of fun, but what happens if you don't have any crumbs? So I have my stash of yellow fabric right here in this bin and we're gonna get started making crumbs for crumb quilting and seeing what we can come up with. So we're first gonna look at the different fabrics and I'm gonna pull out the yellow fabrics that I know will work well for this. Let me just turn this around so we can see. So I'm gonna pull out the pieces. Now I do have some smaller pieces in here. I have some strips, but for the most part the Fabrics are large pieces, and if it's multicolored, I will just cut out the yellow part. So as I dig through, I'm gonna pull out the small pieces that I have, but still these aren't the size of crumbs, at least not what people are considering crumbs being super duper tiny. So as I pull them out, I'm just deciding what I want for colorways, and I wanna make sure that I get a nice variety of values with those colors. And these all are looking good. And the strips are really good when you're making crumbs because you can keep adding to them. And uh, yeah, so even the big pieces like this, I'm going to maybe cut down and use. And I'm just gonna dig through and find all that I can. I love this one, it has little pins on it, it's so cute. Love the daisies. And here's some more five inch squares. So I'm just gonna keep digging through, pulling out, oh, there's some more strips and other pieces that I have left over from projects that I didn't feel like I should throw away. Those are some bathing babies or kids <laughs> on the beach. I love it. And uh, I'm just gonna keep going, looking through. There's a bigger piece. And uh, again, I'm looking for value and I'm looking for uh, yellow pieces. But this is all stuff that I would have saved for projects that I felt were too small to throw away, like crumbs. I usually throw the crumbs away, like I said. So uh, we're getting quite a few though. This last part will probably go quickly because there are so many oranges on this side. So I will speed up this process and we'll see what I can find. Okay, so I have a nice pile. And as you can see, they're bigger chunks and what would be not considered a crumb, of course. I even have this strip of this really great fabric that's like a 1930s print that I love. And I am just sorting through these, seeing what I have, kind of separating the smaller chunks and the strips and then the charms and all that so I can kind of get an idea of what I have and what I need to do next. But as you can see, I, I found a bunch of different pieces that I can use. So now that I have them all separated, I can start putting pieces together and building my fabric. Like I said, we make fabric out of this, so we can do that. Now, I also have to cut out some of this yellow because I want to just have the yellow. I don't want to have the purple and green. So I'm just going to pull the yellow from this block, which is nice because you can do that. And you don't have to be real straight because you're going to make it all wonky and crazy anyway, almost like a crazy quilt when you use these crumbs. So that's always fun to do too. And I'm gonna do that with these two. I'm gonna take the yellow portions out and leave the black and white because I really want this piece or this crumb panel that we're gonna be making to be yellow. And see, these pieces sometimes are just too small to keep, but anything that I cut off that I can't use in this project, I'm gonna put away and make a crumb bin. So now we start to build. So I'm gonna take a strip and put the fabric on top of it, right sides together. I'm just gonna keep doing that till I have sets that I can go to the sewing machine with. Now you can do this right at your sewing machine, but what I like to do is clip them together when I'm doing it, of course, for camera. And if I'm just like sitting in front of the TV or watching a video or something like that, I can sit and do this and get it all prepared with clips. And then when I had a piece that's too big, I just cut it down because again, we're making crumbs and we're making things fit. And I keep going and I'll speed this up uh, so you can see exactly how I do it. And um, then I'll show you how I sew them together.
Okay, so now I'm gonna just take them all to the sewing machine. And you can see that some of these are bigger chunks on top of the strips. That's okay, because we'll be cutting them up into units to make our crumbs. I have yellow thread in my machine it's using a regular quarter inch seam allowance, but you don't have to. You can use whatever seam allowance as long as it's at least a quarter of an inch. So if you wanna use the edge of your presser foot, that's fine. There really aren't any rules with this technique because you're not matching up any seams. So you don't have to worry about having an exact quarter inch. Give yourself a break, just have some fun and just sew these units together. So once I come back from the sewing machine, I just clip them apart. And uh, once I get them all clipped apart, I'm gonna start by finger pressing them and then using the roller to uh, get those seams nice and flat. And then I'm gonna chunk things up. And you don't have to be straight. Again, have some fun. Just, you're making crumbs, so just cut things apart. So even when you get to a big piece that we've sewed together, like this one, we would just cut it. And see how I cut it on an angle? That's okay. All the rules are out the window with this technique. Here's one where I sewed two charms together, and I'm gonna cut this on the diagonal. And look at that, I'm gonna have some really interesting pieces. So as we keep sewing these units together, which you'll see in a minute, you're going to just keep slicing and dicing those pieces. And that's gonna give you that crumb look that everybody's talking about and that everybody wants to make right now. But not everybody has the crumbs. Now you do too. And once we're done with this, you'll have tons of crumbs because crumb quilts make crumbs. Okay, once you have them all done, it's time to make some more chunks. So I'm doing exactly what I did before. I'm laying the chunks that we just cut up onto strips. And if you don't have strips, you can always make strips out of your stash. Just take some yardage and cut some strips. And that'll allow you to make the chunks the way I'm making them. But you can also sew chunks to chunks, as you can see here. That also is a benefit to having the bigger pieces because you can pull some of the bigger pieces to put chunks onto. And if you have to, trim things down. It's a very freeing process to do this and it allows for creativity and placement and just some fun. Okay, and we go back to the sewing machine and do exactly what we did before. Sew these together and just keep going through this routine of sewing them, chunking them up, pressing them, and then sewing more chunks together till you get a nice big piece of fabric. And as you can see, I am chain stitching these, meaning that I'm putting one right after another through the machine. And if it goes off the edge a little bit, that's okay. And if I don't have fabrics together at the beginning or the end, that's okay too. I just keep on sewing. And sometimes I'll just take them out and start a new chain, especially with a puppy because she'll grab them from underneath the sewing machine and run with them if they get too long. So I'm just gonna take a minute and get organized, take some of these pieces and get them into a container. It gets really messy, this whole process, and you have a lot of chunks and a lot of pieces. So it's always a good idea to take a minute and clean up and uh, get yourself set. So now I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. I'm gonna uh, clip these units apart and then I'm going to finger press them and then roller press them and chunk them apart and make more units. And we just keep doing that and doing that until we get a piece that is the size we desire for whatever project we're working on. As you're getting bigger and bigger pieces, you're gonna to start to make them fit together by cutting them down to fit, almost like a jigsaw puzzle that you have a whole lot of control over. And this is gonna allow for some randomness and it's also gonna allow for these units to fit together. Now, one thing that you might be wondering about is the bias edges. We're not worried about that because even if they distort or stretch a little, nobody is ever gonna know and it's not even gonna matter with this design. It's just gonna look like part of the design. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Really, honestly, and I know I've said it before, rules are out the window. You're just having fun and sewing together pieces of fabric to make new fabric. So as you sew bigger chunks to bigger chunks, you get even bigger chunks until you finally get a big, big piece of fabric, the desired size that you'd like. And as you can see, it's getting bigger and bigger as I cut them down and make the puzzle pieces fit and go to the sewing machine and make more and more big chunks out of what was small chunks. And you just keep doing this as it grows and grows and grows. 
Now, sometimes you have to piece pieces together to fill in the gaps for whatever you're trying to make. And you can see that I'm doing that here. I'm just going back to that bin and seeing what I can pull out to fit everything together. And you keep building and building and filling in those gaps and going back and pulling fabrics and just getting it all together so it makes one complete piece of fabric when it's done. So now that I have two rather large chunks, I'm going to bridge them together with one long strip. And because of what I'm making, this really isn't gonna matter because I'm gonna be cutting up this piece of fabric that I'm making anyway. But uh, you might wanna consider using even more strips of chunks to bridge your chunks together uh, if you want to, depending on what you're making, of course. So when you're done sewing it all together, you end up with a fabric square like this. And you can use this as you would any piece of fabric. You can cut squares out of it and just use your ruler to line it up. You don't even have to have straight squares. You can make them on the angle or whatever you'd like. And you can make this any size you like. You can make it even long and skinny. You don't have to make a square like I did. Now I'm going to make coasters out of these because I think they're gonna make some really cute summer coasters and I don't have any. Uh, I do have a video on how to make them and I use the exact same technique, except for, of course, I use my crumb fabric to make them. And uh, I'll put a link to the video at the end of this video in the description and up here in the right-hand corner of your screen if you wanna check that out. So, but you can do anything. You can make tote bags or table runners or quilts. You can even make quilt blocks out of these. The ideas are endless. Anything you can make out of fabric, you can use this crumb fabric to make something. And what's really cool is when you're trimming it down, you get more crumbs. So you can set them aside for your next crumb project. So it was easy, right? There are no rules. That's the best part about crumbs and working with crumbs. There just aren't any rules and you can just have some fun, use up some of those scraps and get a really cool artistic, like abstract, impromptu type of product out of it. As I mentioned in the video, the panel I used, I made these cute little coasters. And again, I'll put a link to the video on how to make these, but you can make anything anything out of these crumbs. I hope you enjoyed this. Please consider subscribing and even leaving a comment below telling me what you think and what you are going to make with your crumbs. I'll see you soon. Make sure you take some time to sew. Bye.